Number 60. The following quantities are placed in a container. So we have 1.5 times 10 to the 24th atoms of hydrogen. We got 1.0 moles of sulfur. And we have 88.0 grams of diatomic oxygen. And letter B. What is the total number of moles of the atoms for the three elements? Okay. So let's just list them all out. They told us that we have 1.5 times 10 to the 24th. Ugh, I don't like that four. There we go. Atoms of H. Okay. Uh, we have 1.0 moles of sulfur. And we have 88.0 grams of diatomic oxygen. Di in chemistry means two. Atomic means atoms. So in this case, we need to show that we have two oxygens. So I'll put an O2. Now, generally speaking, hydrogen um, naturally is H2. However, this question did not state that it was diatomic hydrogen. So I'm not going to put H2. And also they told us that uh, we have atoms of H, not molecules of H. Molecules are used for molecules and compounds. That would be H2. But if you just have a single element, you're using the word atom. So I'm going to leave this question as if it was just an H. And now we have all three of our uh, quantities here. But the question is, we need to find the total number of moles of all the atoms, all the single elements, right? Now, the, the unit that we need to find is obviously the number of moles, right? We wanted to find the total number of moles of the atoms for the three elements. So when we're talking about three elements, obviously we're looking for hydrogen, sulfur, and oxygen. And these need to be by themselves. Okay, so it seems like they already gave us that we have one mole of sulfur. So that's all good. But the thing here is that for the other two, I have to convert atoms of H into moles of H. And you could put M-O-L-E-S, but M-O-L-S and M-O-L-E-S is the same thing. I just like to use M-O-L-S. So we have to go from atoms to moles for the hydrogen. And then because they gave us grams of O2, I have to go to moles. But now here's the thing. We want those moles of the atoms. And like we were talking about before, when we were talking about atoms of hydrogen, it's just one H. So they don't want moles of O2 because that would be a molecule, not an atom. They just want the moles of O. So somehow we have to convert from O2 to O. But we'll get there. No, no biggie there. Let's just, let's see. I think I, I think, eh, actually that was, that was pretty good. But the first thing is let's convert the 1.5 times 10 to the 24th atoms of H to moles. Now all these conversions are just dimensional analysis. We're always going to be multiplying by that ratio. And I gave a little cheat sheet here as to the flow of going from one thing to another. It's always going to be grams to moles to molecules or atoms. Molecules are if you have a molecule or a compound, and atoms is if you just have a single element. And I wrote down A here as like the arbitrary element or compound, whatever you're thinking about. But the thing here is that it doesn't change. So if I want to go from atoms to moles, I'm going to start with atoms and I got to get to moles. So I have to use Avogadro's number. But let's just set it up first and see how it goes. Always start with what you're given. 1.5 times 10 to the 24th atoms of H. And now times by that ratio, that's what this dimensional analysis is all about. And the unit that you don't want, in this case, we don't want the word atoms of hydrogen, that goes on the opposite side. So the atoms of hydrogen are gonna go on the bottom and the moles are going to go up on the top. Always write your units first and then we can pick out what the values are actually going to be. Well, we just said that this was Avogadro's number, but what is Avogadro's number? Well, Avogadro's number states that for every one mole, 
of whatever you're talking about, I'll just label it as A, it equals 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules or atoms, we're using atoms here, so I'll just write atoms, of that same substance. So moles to atoms, one mole equals the Avogadro's number in atoms, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Atoms cancel out with atoms, and now you're left with just the unit of moles, and that's what we want, so we can just convert. Now, this Avogadro's number is in the denominator, so we're going to divide, denominator divide, DD. So I'm going to say 1.5. Now, I like to use the second comma button. That's the EE -E button. That means times 10 to the. So I could just say 24. If I do the EE -E button, the Calci understands that um, we're going to group all that scientific notation together, and I don't need to use parentheses. So I'll say divided by 6.022 second comma EE -E, times 10 to the, and then I just put 23. Press enter, and there you go. Now just know that your total sig figs, if you're playing the sig fig game, comes from how many sig figs are in the beginning. So for a dimensional analysis and converting, since you have two sig figs in the beginning, you need to have two sig figs at the end. So this would technically be 2.5 moles of H. Okay, so now I have two out of the three moles. So I got 2.5 moles of hydrogen, I have one mole of sulfur. Now we just need to convert the 88.0 grams of O2 into just moles of the oxygen. Well, let's test it out. Seems like the first step I would have to do is I have to go from grams of O2 to moles of the same substance. So in this case, I could make a pit stop at moles of O2. Then from there, I could make a relationship between moles of O2 and just the moles of oxygen. So start with what you're given, 88.0 grams of O2 times by that ratio. Put the unit that you don't want on the opposite side. So in this case, you don't want grams of O2. So grams of O2 goes on the bottom and we'll do moles of O2 up on the top. Okay, always units first, and then we come back and figure out what, what's the number is going to be. Well, we're starting with grams now, and we're going to moles, so we use the periodic table. And the periodic table tells us that one mole of whatever you're talking about equals the, that amount in grams of the compound. And maybe what I'll do is I'll say it's the, the molar mass, it's the number. Maybe I'll do that. So you got to just look at the molar mass. It's the larger number out of the two. It's not the whole number. It's the bigger decimal number that's found on the periodic table. And for oxygen, right, O2, maybe I could put it over here. You have oxygen. There's two of them. And each oxygen on the periodic table, on my periodic table, is 16.00. So if I just add up, you know, 2 times 16, I get 32. 0 .00. So that's the total number here. So one mole of O2 equals 32.00 .00 grams of O2. Now cancel that out because grams cancel out, but we're not there yet because we want moles of just O. So let's get into the habit of not calculating every single step. Just keep rolling with it. Times by another ratio. You got this. Throw the unit that you don't want on the opposite side. So now moles of O2 go on the bottom. And we'll do moles of just oxygen on the top. Now, this is a mole-to-mole -mole conversion. So mole-to-mole -mole conversions, you just have to look a little bit into your compound or molecule. Now, you say to yourself, okay, if I have a total of one of O2, how many oxygens are there? There's a total of two oxygens in one whole O2. That's your mole relationship. So in one whole O2, that's why the one's over here, there are two oxygens. So that's where the two, the two oxygens go with one whole O2. And now your moles of O2 cancel and you're at moles of O, that's the moles of the element. So we can just plug it in, 
The 32 is in the denominator, so divide that, and then times 2, and there you go. Now, this has three sig figs, so technically my answer should have three sig figs, so 5.50. Add that extra uh, zero in there for sig figs, and now you have moles of O. Okay, so now I have all my moles of the elements, so 5.5 .5 moles of oxygen, 2.5 moles of hydrogen, and 1.0 moles of the sulfur. So now all we have to do is just add them up. Total moles equals 2.5. Uh, we got 1.0. Then we got 5.50. So maybe what I'll do is I'll just move this word over here a little bit because I just want to show sig figs for addition purposes. So we're going to add all these up, 2.5 plus 1 plus 5.5. You don't have to plug in sig figs for calculations. Um, but now my answer just comes out to be 9. But for sig fig purposes, you have to put the sig fig at the placeholder that everybody has, the last placeholder that everybody has. Now this one, the 5.50 is the only one that has this place. The other ones don't have that place. So I'm not going to go to the hundredths, but everybody has this place. So I have to go out to the tenths. But we could just say plus or, you know, dot, and then put a zero there. Because 9 is the same thing as 9.0. And that's the total number of moles. So we got 9 moles, 9.0 for sig figs. And that's it. Woohoo! <laughs> what do you think? I hope this helped you out. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel. And I'm looking forward to helping you with further uh, problems with chemistry. Check the channel out. We also got physics and math videos. Maybe we can help you with that. Or maybe you know some friends or classmates that are in those, those, uh, those uh, subjects. So thanks so much. Thanks for being part of the community. And I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Bye-bye.